tonight, especially on a Thursday. Front's beautiful. Thursday. So anyways, yeah, you know what I'm talking about. So I got about a good 37 minutes of Charlie Sheen jokes ready in the chamber for him. You guys should have seen your fucking faces. He would have hated me. Oh, no, actually, I don't tell jokes. I, I tell stories. Um, well, actually, that's, that's not true. I, I do actually tell one joke. Uh, knock, knock. Is that is there? 9-11. About the poor decisions I have made. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm here to tell you, I've been to the top of the mountain. I've scaled the Everest of poor life decisions. I've met the wise man on top of that mountain, yay barely. I'm bringing his words to you. Don't eat shrooms and go to Homemaker's Furniture. That's a lesson I had to learn the hard way. Oh, Jesus, the hard way. No, before I go into the story, I do want to let you know that I don't condone drug usage. It doesn't make you cool. It just makes life more tolerable. <laughs> uh, I actually remember when my doctor told me that I had to make a decision between hard drugs and second dinner. It was a tough day. <laughs> but I turned my life around after that. <laughs> so anyways, uh, I, I, I get a bag of shrooms. I, a friend calls me frantic. She needs help purchasing some cool furnishings. And I say, sure, I'll help you out. I'll go shopping. We show up and the first thing you notice when you walk into homemakers with a bag of hallucinogenic mushrooms in your belly hole are the fucking penguins everywhere <laughs> on the sales floor parachuting in from the ceiling greeting you at the door and saying are you okay sir why are your people so dilated sir do you need some water sir maybe you need to lay down <laughs> and so i turn to this greeter slash penguin and this is an exact <laughs> quote i say oh this place is so beautiful <laughs> Shit. So I, I'm not so much helping my friend as I am heckling the furniture, right? They, they got these rugs that are two stories tall, and I'm just gaining running speed running right into them. Uh, they got this swivel chair. I don't know how to describe it. It's a, it's a chair that comes to about here, and it, it, swi it swivels. I don't need to fucking spoon feed these to you, do I? It's a swivel chair. I jump on top of the swivel chair, and I have her spin me around. Oh. And then, of course, a guy my size is going to end up in the children's furniture section. It's fake, right? So I'm trying to cram my bloated carcass into a children's chair, and it's just not happening. Maybe if we sew three of them together, you could fit pockets of me in, but otherwise this shit was just not happening. So I would try to sit myself in this chair, and I would laugh and laugh and laugh, and my friend would laugh and laugh and laugh, and security would watch us and laugh and laugh and laugh. It becomes very clear that I have to leave Homemaker's Furniture right now. So she asked me on her way out, do you want to go get some dinner? And I said, sure, I'd love some dinner. What she doesn't tell me is that it's dinner with her two 14-year-old nieces. <laughs> so we're at uh, the IHOP on the south side, just outside of Walmart, that bastion of culture, that place where art and commerce intersect. <laughs> right? And just to paint the scene for you, she gets up and leaves and goes to the bathroom. Waitress comes up and asks me, hey, are these girls with you? Now that's a loaded question. Especially wearing these glasses, because these glasses have two modes. One is, I'm already high, and the other is, oh, I got candy in the van. <laughs> I am not the kind of person that you either have kids with or leave your kids with. I'm aware of that. <laughs> so Marty looking pretty suspicious, and she comes up to me, she says, are these girls with you? And I say, oh no! No, 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 hell no, 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 well, whatever the, no, no. Which is probably the second worst answer I could have given. The girls gave the worst answer. Yeah, we're with him. He showed us some pictures on Facebook, and he promised to take us out for pancakes. <laughs> taking money from the poor, feeding it to the rich. I wasn't so much Robin Hood as I was robbing the hood. <laughs> you see what I did there? Wordplay! Oh my god, I'm hilarious. Anyways, uh, I, if I didn't quit that job, I would have been fired. Hands down, I would have been fired. Uh, I walked in with a handful of balloons for a charity. I let them go, and I guess when you let balloons go in the building, it sets off every fire alarm in the building. Two fire engines, one I was just trying to make the place more festive. I don't see what the big deal is. Uh, and one of my 
favorite stories from almost getting fired from that place has to be the time they caught me masturbating out on the call floor. Oh, man. Oh, Uh, what happened was this woman, she comes in, she's talking about her toothbrush and how awesome it is. It gets MP3s, has a fog machine out the back, fucking laser lights. And I say, lady, you're fucking toothbrushing shit. <laughs> Let me tell you what I'm rocking. It's got Dora the Explorer on the front. I press a big red button, she lifts a basket up and down. If she says lifts a basket up and down, I don't get that. So I start pantomiming it. She lifts a basket up and down, up and down, up and down. That it looks like I'm masturbating. So the new hire class walks through and I'm waving hi to them. Hi. <laughs> While pretending to jack myself off. Welcome to your place of business. I hope you like the job. <laughs> the time I had to leave though, the very last straw was chair jousting. Now I don't know if you know a lot about chair jousting. It's truly the sport of kings. What you do is you line chairs up at opposite ends of the office and you make lances out of cardboard tubes, and then you fucking ram your chairs into each other as fast as you can. <laughs> this 56-year-old woman decides to play the game with me. I love her to death, man. She's great. I had a great time. She broke her femur in two places. <laughs> oh, I had to leave shortly after that. That's not the last job I quit, though. I just recently quit a factory job. Uh, actually, it was on a temp assignment. I was the receptionist. Because when you get new clients into your office, this is the mug you want to have greet them. <laughs> right? But uh, they liked me enough that they offered me a job at the factory, and nobody's talking to me because they only know me as the receptionist lady, right? <laughs> But there's one guy who talks to me. He's, uh, he's about my size, with half of my hair and a third of my teeth. Uh, his name is Rob. You never forget the name of the man that you attempt to murder three times. Oh, how do I even begin to tell this story? The first time I almost killed Rob. I uh, am working at a machine. I'm snapping metal onto wood. It's, it's metal, wood, button, metal, wood, button, metal, wood, button, metal, wood, button, metal, button. Shit. <laughs> I am not shooting your nanigans on this one. I bent his finger into a Tetris piece. <laughs> oh, but he's coming back a week later because he has a family and a meth dealer to support. And power to him, right? So he's coming back and he, I'm working the same station. He's working behind me. He's handing me the pieces of metal that I'm snapping to the wood. Well, I kind of drop it, but I catch it. And as I catch it, it goes in his hand and out of his hand. And he stared at me. And I'm staring at him, staring at me, I'm staring at him. And he lets out this scream that's like a like an angry, wounded Sam Kinison, just kind of like a wah, wah, wah! <laughs> And I am letting out a scream like I'm a child who just watched his dog get run over. <laughs> And so that's why I want you to know that the third time I almost killed Rob, it's not my fault, it's society's, man. How are you going to build, it, it wasn't even a nail gun, it's like a nail room, but it's big enough for somebody to walk into. Why would you even build something like that? Now granted, I should have turned off the machine before I sent him in to fix it, but what I'm not saying that I'm not at fault. I'm just saying I share the fault with all of society. Oh my goodness. Poor decisions, right? Poor decisions.